So this video is going to be covering chapter 8, section 2, which is types of chemical reactions. And though there are thousands, possibly millions of chemical reactions out there, um, we tend to categorize them into a few very specific types of categories, at least for the purposes of this course. And they are uh, synthesis, uh, decomposition, single displacement reactions, uh, double displacement reactions, and finally, combustion, which we'll be covering in that order in this video. Now, synthesis reactions are uh, reactions where two elements combine to form a new compound. So, for example, if you have element A and element X, when they react, they yield compound AX with whatever subscripts are down here. Now these reactions tend to be common with elements like oxygen or sulfur that are very electronegative. For example, uh, magnesium combines with diatomic oxygen to yield uh, magnesium oxide. And just for reference, throughout this video I'm going to be using uh, pre-balanced equations. Hopefully you already know how to balance the uh, atoms on either side, it just makes it easier that I don't have to go through the process each. Now this is a similar process with uh, sulfur. For example, eight barium atoms can combine with sulfur, which occurs in nature, uh, bonded as eight atoms together to yield eight atoms of barium sulfide. And some elements can even combine with, say, oxygen in multiple different ways. Iron, for example, depending on whether it has a 2 plus or 3 plus oxidation state, can either combine with oxygen to form uh, just simple iron 2 oxide, like that, or it can form uh, iron 3 oxide, which has a very different chemical formula. And it all depends on the oxidation states of the various elements that go in. Now the group 17 elements, that is the halogens, if you'll remember are very reactive because they're one electron away from a stable octet. So they will often react with uh, metals that are nearby to form uh, compounds in synthesis reactions. For example, uh, sodium will react with diatomic chlorine to produce common table salt. Or, uh, Potassium will react with diatomic iodine to form potassium iodide, etc. And these are what are known as salts, which we'll study more later. Now we get to decomposition reactions, which are pretty much the opposite of synthesis reactions. It's when one single complex compound, let's say uh, AX, that is there's two elements, A and X, uh, decomposes or breaks down into two simpler compounds. In this case it would be A and X. And you'll notice if you were to flip the arrow around you would get a synthesis reaction that we demonstrated earlier. Now the simplest decomp decomposition reactions are uh, ones that involve binary compounds. So that is where you take a compound like water and you decompose it into two uh, lone constituent parts that are standalone elements by themselves. So you take a binary compound which is just made of two separate elements and decompose it into its two constituent uh, atoms and elements. However, because most things tend to be more stable when they're bonded together, like in water, uh, many decomposition reactions require the addition of heat which uses the symbol delta over the arrow, or electricity, which is the case for uh, water. And this process is known as electrolysis. That is, breaking up a compound into its constituent parts using electricity. Now there are a bunch of specific examples about various types of decomposition reactions on page 280 of your textbook. However, they're very simple to explain and they all follow the same basic principle of a complex compound breaking down into two constituent parts. And I felt that 
just going into the specific nature of what each of these uh, products would be each time is uh, rather unnecessary because it's the same basic principle for each decomposition reactant. It's just uh, with specific uh, constituent parts each time. Now the third type of reaction we're going to be covering is single displacement reactions, sometimes called simply uh, replacement reactions. And this is because in single displacement reactions you just take one element or one ion, etc., and add it to an already somewhat complex compound. And what you'll find is that these two will just replace each other. So you would yield the single uh, cation in this case, plus the compound. That is, the B and the A in this example have switched places during this reaction. For example, if you have aluminum and you put it in an aqueous solution of lead nitrate, that should be an N right there, there we go, uh, you will yield just solid lead, PB, and the aluminum will replace the lead in a nitrate compound. So you can see that you started off with the aluminum separate and you end up with the lead separate with the aluminum taking its place in the nitrate compound. And this is the same form for all replacement reactions. So now we're going to be covering uh, double displacement reactions, which similar to single replacement reactions involve uh, elements switching around with one another let's say element A switching with element B. So they follow the general formula AX plus BY. That is, in this case, rather than one element, say A, being completely separate and then just switching with element B, elements A and B are already in a compound. They just switch their, I guess you could say their partner, uh, within each compound. So AX and BY would yield AY and BX. Now for most of these reactions, uh, both reactants will be aqueous, that is dissolved in a solution of water. However, not all the time are these necessarily aqueous as well. For example, if let's say the compound BX formed a solid that wasn't uh, soluble in water, you would get in your beaker a sort of uh, precipitate forming on the bottom as a result of this reaction. Oppositely, if one of these products were, say, a gas, uh, you would get bubbles that started to form within your solution rising to the top. And occasionally, like say if you were to combine hydrogen chloride with sodium hydroxide, when you switch the two, you'll notice the Na and the Cl will go together to form salt plus HOH. Now that doesn't make much sense because you shouldn't have these two H's separated. So what you end up with is two H's and one O. That's right, you get water and salt out of reacting uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide final type of reaction we're going to be talking about is combustion. Now combustion is when a substance, let's say AX, combines with oxygen to release a ton of light and heat as well. Now the simplest of these reactions is probably just when you take a balloon or a test tube full of hydrogen and you take a match to it and then it combines with the oxygen in the air to create water vapor. Or if you take the propane that you use to grill stuff at your house or wherever, which is C3H8 and combine it with oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and again water vapor. 
and for all of these you release a ton of heat and light that was previously stored in the chemical bonds over here.